Good afternoon. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Good afternoon, y'all. This is Ned. And this is Michelle. And we are MyPhilippineDreams.com. Michelle and me are actually going on a trip tomorrow morning. We're going to be heading north and west um, on the island of Negros Oriental, heading off to where? Mabinai. Yes, we're going to Mabinai. There's supposed to be a bunch of springs and caves and waterfalls and all that stuff up there. We also have a scheduled nine-hour brownout tomorrow. So it's kind of be nice to get out of the city because I mean, when there's no electricity, it gets kind of dull. So we're going to be heading on a trip. We haven't gone on a trip in a while, so it's been like a couple months at least. I can't remember the last time we went to. We <laughs> went to <laughs> Probably longer. Um, it's been rainy and stuff, but we're supposed to have two days of really nice weather tomorrow, so we're going to head out. Um, what we'd like to do right now before we head out is talk about some of the things you need to do in preparing to come to the Philippines. If you're deciding, you know, I got my retirement, I got this pension, the Philippines look nice, white sand beaches. Um, there's a bunch of things that you have to do in order to prepare. One of them is you got to do your research. You got to do your homework um, and you got to try to accrue as much information as you can. And there are a number of resources that you can utilize to accrue that information. And we're going to go through a short list from, in my opinion, the least important to the most important. Um, again, this is just my experience. Um, this might, different people might utilize different resources, but this is what worked for me. And first up is ebooks. Ebooks, yes. A number of people who have come to the Philippines, retired to the Philippines, working in the Philippines, have written ebooks. Um, ebooks are a good resource. They have indexes and table of contents and all that stuff. The thing is, is uh, things change over time here. Um, specifically in regards to laws, regulations, and all that. Um, so what you're getting is, you're not getting real-time information. You're getting basically archived information from whenever that person wrote the ebook. I actually got one ebook, I believe it was Dave DeWalt's Philippine Extreme, um, I think that's his website, and it was pretty good. Um, it was, there was a lot of visa information, and visa information in particular in regards to fiancés and kids and whatnot, um, that stuff's always changing. So, um, ebooks are a good resource. You don't need to get every single ebook out there. You don't need to get the ebook on how to brush your teeth in the Philippines. I really didn't need that one. But um, just you know, get get one or two. Ask around for the best ones, and it is a good resource that you can use. Mm -hmm. What's the second one? Jen, uh, Jen Peters Guide. Jen Peters Guide. Yes. Jen. Jen's Peters. Jen. It's uh, Jen. 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 Jen's. Jens. Okay. Jens. Jens Peters guy. There's no link or anything and I can't refer you to it so that I'm not getting any kickbacks or anything. But um, this is a pretty exhaustive, thorough guide to just about everything in the Philippines. It's got pictures, photographs, it's got maps, it's got charts, it's got all kinds of information. Um, if you're traveling around and you want to do some traveling, this is a, this is a great one to have. Instead of carrying this big, humongous book around with you, um, if you go into certain areas, say you go into Bahol or Camigan or whatnot, you can just photocopy that section, or you can scan it and just have it in your smartphone, and you can carry it around instead of carrying around this big honking book. But that's a great resource. It's a great guide. It's uh, it's updated with you know hotel prices, locations, maps, all that stuff, which you're not going to find a lot of times when you're doing Google searches on different areas. So that's number two. Um, third is chatting. Yes, third is chatting. Um, there's a bunch of websites like Date Asia and whatnot. Uh -huh. These free websites that you can <laughs> utilize to meet people um, and to get some real-time information. Um, you can sign up for free. Just you know, be upfront because a lot of them are expecting like long-term relationships. They you know they wanting to get married and have romance and all that stuff. Um, so just be upfront and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm planning on retiring. I was thinking about it. I'm trying to learn a little bit about your country, the culture, the traditions, the mores, um, the ins and outs, the language or whatnot. Um, and that's a good resource. But be upfront with them. Tell them, you know, we, I might, might never meet you, but, you know, let's talk and let's see what happens and just, you know, take it from there. Um, that's a good resource and it's real-time information from people with many decades of experience in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Just pick one, though. Just one one Filipino. That's his problem. He picked too many. You'll never hear the end of it. Okay, <laughs> so that's number three, chatting. What's number four? YouTube. YouTube. A number of uh, expats have come over to the Philippines and set up YouTube channels like myself, um, Henry over at Life Beyond the Sea, um, Pop Z and whatnot. And uh, those are a good resource. 
the only problem is it sometimes can be a lot of information like Michelle and I tend to spam out all kinds of videos and it's not categorized or anything really so sometimes it's hard to search through that it can give you um, an impression it can give you some images um, it can also give you information but it's hard to index it it's hard to like search for specific information um, so, but it is a good, it, it's a good resource to utilize and people also provide feedback and comment section and you can do a, additional research based on those comments, people giving feedback to whoever originally posted the video. Um, next is websites. Number five, websites, yes. Uh, there are a number of expats in the Philippines who have set up websites. Some of them are more informative than others. Our website at this point is still in its infancy. We're still working on it. Um, we're still trying to categorize things and index things and get information at people's fingertips and it's gonna get better over time. Um, but I wouldn't recommend our website at this point. Okay. <laughs> um, Henry over at Life Beyond the Sea, he's got a website that he set up quite some time ago. He's got a lot of information on there. You can just do Google searches. There's also a number of expats who set up blogs and stuff. That's basically what ours is, a blog. Um, again, utilize the websites. There's a lot of information out there that you can utilize. Uh, also government websites. If you've got visa questions in particular, um, the government, the Philippine government websites, while not, you know, maybe cutting edge, they're all the updated information, most of it can be found there. Mm -hmm. All right, and so that's number five, and what's number six? Forums. Forums, yes. Uh, in order to get real-time interactive information, I think a forum is probably your best bet. I joined the Living in Cebu forums about a little over a year before I came here, and basically it prepared me for about 95% of the things that I've encountered here. The other 5%, you know, sometimes satellites fall out of the sky, and it's hard to prepare for those type of incidences. Um, those guys have been here for a long time. They, you know, decades, at least years and decades, they have families, they've, you know, set up businesses, they've done all kinds of stuff. I mean, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, all that fun stuff. They can be a, uh, they can be a rough crowd. They're not gonna sugarcoat it. They're not gonna tell you what you wanna hear. They've heard every question, you know, hundreds of times. Um, so make sure you utilize the search function before you ask questions. But if you really want real-time information from people that are there, um, that, I believe, more than anything else, is the way to go. Um, just develop a real, and you can also develop relationships. I've met some of the guys from the forum. Um, they've invited me to their homes and whatnot. And uh, it's, it's, I think that's the best way to do it. Again, that's just my opinion. So that's about it. Um, I'm preparing to come to the Philippines and weighing out all the pros and cons. Um, and not being the guy, you know, being told what he wants to hear or looking for information that he wants to hear. What's great about the forums also is they're going to tell you things that you don't want to hear, but you need to hear. So in weighing, again, in weighing out all that information, utilize all these resources that are available so that you're prepared for, you know, life here. Also, you got to, you know, visit and do all that other stuff too. So that's about it. we got to get packed and ready to go because we're heading out. Michelle wants to leave at 5 o'clock in the morning to see the sunrise. <laughs> Yeah, she's going to get up at 5 in the morning. <laughs> I'm usually getting at, what, odd hours. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we'll be leaving around 7, and uh, we'll be doing, we'll be doing uh, video with that and stuff, and it should be a good time. So stay tuned. This is Ned. And this is Michelle. We are My Philippine Dreams, and we'll see you next time.